In the following configuration, wheels A and B are connected by a belt, as are wheels C and D. Wheels B and C are connected by an axle. Wheel A has a radius of 7 feet and rotates at a speed of 6 revolutions per minute. Wheel B has a radius of 4 feet, wheel C has a radius of 8 feet, and wheel D has a radius of 3 feet. How many seconds does it take wheel D to make a complete rotation? Whenever you're dealing with a belt and wheel problem, there are three things that you need to identify for each wheel. One is the radius. So we might say the radius of wheel A, R of A. We know the radius of wheel A. It's seven feet. The second thing you need to know is the linear speed or the velocity. This is represented by the variable V. So we might say V of A or the linear speed of A. And we don't have that information. What we do have is the angular speed, six revolutions per minute. Whenever you see revolutions per minute or radians per minute or radians per second or anything revolutions or radians, that is your angular speed or omega. Omega is written as W. So omega of A or the angular speed of wheel A is six revolutions per minute. Now, your goal with these is to go through this information, all three of these things, for each wheel. And if you do that, you will eventually get to the point where you have the, the amount of seconds it takes wheel D to make a complete rotation. So step one is really just writing down the knowns. So we already did wheel A up here. And the nice thing about this is that once you have two of the known things, maybe you have the radius and the velocity, or you have the radius and the omega, is that you can find the third. So we know that wheel A is rotating at, a, at an angular speed of six revolutions in one minute. And we know that the radius is seven feet. So if I'm trying to get to the point where I have a linear speed, linear speed has to be measured in something that is not revolutions or radians. Um, maybe it, I think it will be measured in feet per minute in this case. So my conversion factor going from revolutions to feet I'm going to try to cancel out this revolutions and turn it into feet. So because the radius is 7 feet, there are 2 pi r, or 2 pi times 7 feet. That's the circumference of the circle in 2 pi radians. This is my conversion factor. And it should not be 2 pi radians. It should be, since I'm dealing with revolutions up here and I'm trying to cancel revolutions out, it should be in one revolution. This conversion factor is true because the circumference, or one revolution around the circle, is 2 pi r. And 2 pi r is 2 times pi times 7 in this case. So now all that I need to do is multiply 6 times 2 times 7 and that's 84, and then there's also a pi in there. So what this really is is 84 pi feet per minute. And that is the angular, sorry, the linear speed or the velocity of wheel A. Velocity of wheel A, 84 pi feet per minute. So another important thing here is that if wheels are connected by a belt, if they're connected by a belt, they have the same linear speed or the same V value. So because wheel A is connected to wheel B by a belt, they have the same linear speed. So now when I'm identifying my knowns for wheel B, I know it has a radius of four feet because that's what I was given in here. And then I also know that it has a velocity velocity of wheel B is 84 pi feet per minute. Same thing as wheel A. Because they're connected by a belt, they have the same linear speed. Um, what I am not given is the angular speed of wheel B. But since I have these two other things, I can find the angular speed of wheel B. So I'm going to start with the speed that I was given, which is the linear speed. And I'm going to write out 84 pi feet per minute. And then I'm going to multiply it by a conversion factor. And remember that the angular speed needs to be in revolutions or radians. So I'm going to use revolutions here. So if I'm taking a look at circle B, 
or wheel beam, it has a radius of four feet. That means that its circumference is going to be two times pi times four feet. So in one revolution, there are two pi times four feet. I'm just using my formula for circumference, c equals two pi r. And then what I can do, I can cancel out the pi from the top and the bottom, and then I just need to do 84 divided by eight, and I'm getting 10.5, and then my units cancel here, 10.5 revolutions per minute. So the angular speed of wheel B is 10.5 revolutions per minute. Now, when wheels are connected by an axle, their angular speed is the same. So if they're connected by a belt, they have the same linear speed. If they're connected by an axle, they have the same angular speed. Remember, angular speed is omega or w. So now I'm gonna identify my knowns for wheel C. Wheel C has a radius of eight feet. That's my first one, radius of wheel C eight feet. Because I know the angular speed of wheel B, it's 10.5 revolutions per minute, I also know the angular speed of wheel C. Because they're connected by an axle, their angular speeds are the same. So the angular speed of wheel C is 10.5 revolutions per minute. And then, the th and then the remaining thing that I need to find is the velocity or the linear speed of wheel C. And how I'm going to do that, I'm going to bring down my angular speed, 10.5 revolutions in one minute, multiply by my conversion factor to get it into feet per minute. So since the radius is 8 feet, that means that there are going to be 2 pi times 8 feet in one revolution around the circle. That's the circumference. And then all I need to do is multiply in my calculator and I'm going to keep it in terms of pi. So I'm going to do 10.5 times 2 times 8. And that is 168. And there's 168 pi. So 168 pi feet per minute because my units of revolutions cancel. So now I have everything I need for wheel C. 168 pi feet per minute. Um, and then the last one to do is wheel D. Identifying my knowns for wheel D. It has a radius of three feet. Radius of wheel D, three feet. Now, we know that um, things that are connected by a belt have the same linear speed and things connected by an axle have the same angular speed. So wheel C and wheel D are connected by a belt. This means that they have the same linear speed. So I'm gonna go look at my linear speed for wheel C, and it was 168 pi feet per minute. That is also my linear speed of wheel D, 168 pi feet per minute. And now I have R, I have V, I'm just looking for W or omega of D, and I can find that by bringing down my linear speed, 168 pi feet in one minute, multiplying it by the conversion factor to get it into revolutions per minute. So one revolution is two times pi times three. That's the circumference of wheel, of wheel D because its radius is three feet. It's that many feet. And then the pi's cancel, the units cancel, and now I just need to do 168 divided by six, and that is 28. 28 revolutions per minute. So now I know my angular speed of wheel D, 28 revolutions per minute. And this is close to what the problem is asking, but it's not quite there. So it says, how many seconds does it take wheel D to make a complete rotation? So I'm gonna take this because I know it makes 28 revolutions in one minute. So that's, that's similar to like how many seconds it takes it to make a complete rotation. So I'm gonna do 28 revolutions in one minute. And then I'm gonna convert it into seconds to get it a little bit closer to this. So one minute, 60 seconds, 
28 divided by 60. That is 0.46 repeating. And that is the number of revolutions per second. So 0.46 revolutions per second. And it's asking how long does it take wheel D to make a complete rotation? So I'm not looking for 0.46 repeating revolutions, I'm looking for one revolution. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do 0.46 repeating revolutions in one second equals one revolution in X seconds. And now I'm gonna cross multiply. 0.46 repeating X equals one. Divide by 0.46 repeating. And I'm getting X equals 2.143. And then I need a unit. It asks how many seconds. This is the number of seconds. So it takes wheel D 2.143 seconds to make a complete rotation.